Ever wondered why your body constitution keeps changing your body type? You can't get rid of fats or you just too much fat in the belly or your skin type is dry or your water retention is too much or you have got tendency to get more asthma or colds or that kind of thing. We are taking a look at Healer's Astrology series here where we look at all the parts of Vedic Astrology where we can discover what might be the root cause of it and probably on the way to healing it. First is to find out where we are missing a piece of the puzzle and uncovering stuff of that. Okay, Welcome to my channel. So now in part 5 we spoke of as zodiac signs, the rising signs and the constitution type, body type and constitution. Here I will speak of the 27 constellations and their body type. So it gets a little complex as we shall see. Just to recap, I have put all this stuff out here. Our pie chart is still there. And we have the three dominant energies or pulses of energy. It's a pulsating life force which is responsible for different things in the body as per Ayurveda and how it carries to Vedic astrology. There are two parts here. There is the Ayurveda on one side which talks about Vata, Pitta and Kapha. And there is Vedic astrology in which certain zodiac signs and certain nakshatras, they all form or indicate what is dominant in the person, in the body. Okay. So Vata, what does it stand for? Bodies, air and ether. We are just recapping from part 5. Pitta, which is bodies, fire and water. The fire energy along with water. Kapha is bodies, water plus earth. Now the zodiac signs, the fire signs which are there right in the innermost circle which is marked in the legend over there. The orange is for fire signs, air is Leo Sagittarius, earth sign is Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, all brown, marked brown there. And what do they stand for? Fire signs have more Pitta energy in them, earth signs have more Vata energy in them, air sign is mixed and water sign is Kapha. Like you can see, it's marked. To recap, what is Vata energy? It's the energy of movement. Movement as a principle. Something has to be carried. The fluids of the body, the hormones, the enzymes, the blood. Everything carries stuff to all parts of the body. So Vata is the energy of movement as the principle of mobility. Regulates all fluid flow, eliminations, movement within the mind and body. So everything is movement in terms of Vata. Our thoughts are also Vata. Okay? Thoughts, emotions, feelings, body, mind. Remember, Vedic Astrology and Ayurveda are holistic sciences. It has more to do with how everything works in conjunction. They don't deal in isolation. They all work together and in synchronistic manner. So when we are talking about each one of these forces, Vata, Pitta and Kapha, remember this is all integrated. One modifies the other. It's not just your thoughts, feelings and emotions. It has physical effect on the body. It's not just the zodiac signs, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. It is the nakshatra. The outermost belt on that pie you can see is the nakshatra's Vata, Pitta and Kapha. We'll get to that. Pitta is the principle of digestion or catabolism. The breaking down of food into simpler molecules. Absorption, responsible for regulating body temperature through chemical transformation of food. The food is in a complex form as we all know. It has to be broken down into simpler molecules for absorption. So digestion and absorption, assimilation, nutrition and metabolism promoting vitality and appetite. This is in Ayurveda also called the Jatra Agni or the fire in the stomach. Pitta resides there. So there is fire in the stomach according to Ayurveda which breaks down the food. This is part of the prana or the chi or the life force. Okay, This is one of the aspects of it. Prana has many many aspects. Kapha, the last one. Structure and lubrication. Maintains body resistance, immunity, big one. Responsible for nourishment and lubrication, primarily re responsible for anabolism. The opposite of Pitta is Kapha in a sense. Okay, Because Pitta was catabolism breakdown. Kapha is the rebuilding of those molecules into more complex cellular structures. So it is anabolism, making of stuff. Catabolism is breaking down of stuff. The process of building the body, growth and creation of new cells as well as cell repair and rejuvenation. What we all are looking for as healers, this is a healer's astrology series. 
To recap again, I have put which planets here, as indicated on the left side, governs Pitta, Sun governs Pitta, Moon governs Vata and Kapha. And keep an eye on what Vata, Pitta and Kapha are there, okay, on the right side. Venus governs Vata and Kapha, Mercury governs all the three, Mars governs Pitta, Jupiter governs Kapha, Saturn governs Vata. Rahu and Ketu, the North and South Node, have no say because they are not physical planets. North and South Node just act as the dispositors or whatever house they are occupying. They act according to that nakshatra and according to that lord of that particular house, right? We spoke of this earlier. Now we get to these nakshatras. You can see nakshatra, vata, pitta and kapha are kind of different from the zodiac one on the top over there. The outermost belt of this pi is representing the nakshatra, vata, pitta and kapha. Okay? The inner belt, the fire, earth, water is set on the top. I want you to sit and compare the zodiac vata pitta and kapha tendencies of the body to the nakshatra vata pitta and kapha because it's a mixture. There is no uniformity in this. It behaves in very unique ways, each one. Because each sign, let's just take Aries as an example. Each sign has a lord. Lord of Aries as a rising sign is Mars. You have to understand these examples and we will go this further and further in this playlist so if you're not already subscribed please do so because i'll be adding more content mars is the lord of aries if aries is the rising sign and it has got more pitta energy as the lord of aries itself because fire sign is more pitta right now let's go up on this pie it has got two nakshatras in it it has got ashwini and bharani Ashwini is more of Vata as you can see below. Okay? If a person is born an Aries rising sign and if the ascendant is pointing towards Ashwini nakshatra, which means this person will have more tendency to have Pitta as well as Kapha through life. Pitta as well as Vata, sorry. Right? These two kinds of weaknesses in the body and what they lead to imbalances I shouldn't say weaknesses imbalances in the body they will find through life and one basic rule which is being followed which i could uncover from other astrological sources is the dominant energy is always the rising sign whatever your ascendant is pointing to in terms of the rising sign in zodiac as well as the rising nakshatra will be the dominant kind of weaknesses or imbalances you will have relating to these particular things. Let's take the next one in Aries. Aries rising sign ruled by Mars. So this already got more pitta, more fire. But now this person is born in ascendant pointing to Bharani nakshatra which is also pitta. So Aries rising sign with ascendant pointing towards Bharani will have a dominant Pitta energy there as you can see. The Lord is also of the fire and the Nakshatra is also of fire which can change. Let's take um, another example. Let's take Moon for example. This fourth one here. Cancer ruled by Moon. Moon is responsible what? Vata and Kapha. Okay. It's a water sign so already there is a lot of Kapha in the Cancer ascendant. But if you go towards the nakshatra part, it has got a couple of nakshatras. There is, let's just take Pushya and Ashlesha, the two dominant nakshatras of Cancer. Pushya and Ashlesha. Pushya has got more Pitta energy. See there? Whereas Ashlesha has got more Kapha energy. So if you are born in Ascendant in Cancer with ascendant pointing towards the nakshatra of Pushya, you will have more Pitta, more fire as well as more Kapha through life. This is through life. You got to regulate this. Remember, each one of the signs has one thing or the other. Each one of the nakshatras has one thing or the other. 
what are we trying to do here? We are trying to balance the doshas. These are called doshas, vata, pitta and kapha. They are try- three pulses of life we are trying to balance. And each one of these, if we balance even in the body, it will have effect on the mind, it will have effect on the heart, it will have effect in your life. Okay? This is holistic science. If you take, let's say, another example, Libra. Libra is an air sign. Air signs, if you see the top, is already mixed sign. It has all the three, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. And it is ruled in the ascendant by Venus. Venus governs what? Vata and Kapha. This is the way to analyze. Vata and Kapha. And it's an air sign, so it's already mixed. Okay? So it can have Vata and Kapha as the lord of the ascendant. Now, it has got so many, three nakshatras. It has got Chitra, it has got Swati and it's got Vishakha, three nakshatras. Now, if the ascendant is in Chitra, then it will have more Pitta. But if it's pointing towards Swati or towards Vishakha, it will have more Kapha energy. So, if the ascendant is pointing towards Swati, this person will have tendency to have more phlegm, mucus, asthmatic, breathing related issues. And we can go on. We will dissect this more detailed as we go nakshatra by nakshatra. Okay, this becomes too complicated to discuss in a 10 minute video, obviously. So, the permutations and combinations are a lot, as you can see. I'll conclude with this. Through the 27 nakshatras, which I'm showing you over here, the outermost circle. Okay. Now, if you want to generally know what your body type constitution is according to Vedic Astrology and whatever I am showing you as principles over here, I recommend you can go to the free birth chart which is given at the link over there, astrosage.com backslash kundli. Kundli in Hindi, Sanskrit means the birth chart. Find out what your true ascendant is as per Vedic Astrology and then find out what your nakshatra is. It will give you both. And once it gives you both, you can try and determine what it is that your body is falling short of. Which one of these three basic pulses of life, forces of life, pulsating energy, which goes in all directions, up, down, inward, outward, everywhere it goes. Vata, Pitta and Kapha are the three fundamental structures of Ayurveda itself. If you go to any Ayurvedic doctor in India, he will always talk in terms of these three. He will not talk in terms of one single pulse. Actually, Ayurvedic physicians measure three pulses with three of their fingers. It's a whole science in itself. They'll take the first three fingers and put it on the wrist over here and measure all the three pulses. You can actually measure these pulses, the good ones that is. It requires a lot of yoga and a lot of practice to be able to di- dissect this very acutely. Obviously, you require another kind of sensitivity to this. So that's what it provides. Vata, Pitta and Kapha are actual energy pulses which are measurable in the body. And that stands for these three forces. So I'll leave it with this much. You can plot your own chart, look at what the health issue is. That's the reason I'm bringing all this stuff to you, collected from too many sources of books and websites and whatnot. To name any one over here. Meanwhile, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'll be bringing in more details going by Nakshatra. But next one we will talk about Mahadashas, the Vimshottari Mahadasha and why certain periods of your life has got certain kinds of ailments that are predominant and certain other periods you've got some other type of thing to deal with, physical issues. Okay, Take care, be safe, have a nice day.